two beautiful girls in love with one bad boy. These two girls get lovesick over the wrong guy. But this romantic rivalry has a very modern twist, social media. What were some of the things that were being said back and forth? This is my man, I'm gonna kick your ass. A nasty war of words plays out online and over the phone. Please tell me you would be a dumb enough to put a brand new picture of you and Josh at the beach. Until one steamy Florida night, it goes from words to deadly weapons. 911, what is your emergency? We have someone on the floor that's been stabbed. All over a love triangle. A love triangle. And a little Applebee's knife. Rachel Wade and Sarah Ludeman grew up just a few blocks apart in the small town of Pinellas Park, Florida. They were both beautiful, attended the same high school, and ran in similar circles. But in every other way, the girls were polar opposites. Rachel, 19 years old, was a petite girl, fiercely independent, a waitress, and a blonde bombshell. Rachel Wade was like one of the girls that all the girls wanted to be like and all the boys wanted to be with. Sarah Ludeman was just 18 years old, a high school senior still living at home with a curfew. She loved animals and had dreams of becoming a veterinarian. Hi, Simon. She was kind of a daddy's girl who liked going to baseball games and country rock concerts. But the two beautiful teens did have one thing in common, Josh Camacho. What did these girls see in Josh? To be honest, I don't know. Rachel met Josh in elementary school, but her best friend Ashley DaCosta says it wasn't until high school that the sparks flew. I never got a good feeling from him. Ever? Ever. And Just that gut feeling, you know? 19-year-old Josh was a player, reportedly a deadbeat dad to a toddler, and according to journalist Lane DeGregory, loved being the bad boy. I, I think he... He uh, fashioned himself to be a little thug kid. He had pictures with guns, pictures smoking weed, pictures with pit bulls. That was the image he was striving for as yeah. a 17, 18 year old. And it was working. And he was getting the girls. Sarah never had a real boyfriend, but that would all change one fateful day when she walked into a Chick-fil-A where Josh was a cook. He came out of the back smelling like french fries and winked at her. And no one had ever really flirted with Sarah. And so she was just completely blown away that this guy was interested in her. Rachel and Sarah both fell hard for Josh. There was just one problem. He didn't want each girl to find out about each other. For months, Josh dated both Sarah and Rachel. You have this beautiful girl working at Applebee's in her own apartment, you know, so he sees that in Rachel. And then he sees this little good girl, Sarah, Miss Innocent, you know, still living at home with her parents. So. I think, you know, he, he had his advantages with both of them. But his secret was about to be exposed in a very public way. Rachel started putting up pictures. That's how Sarah found out. He basically said, yeah, I was sleeping with her. Sarah got mad, very mad. But it wasn't at who you'd expect. She wasn't giving up or being mad at him. She was like, I'm going to get him back. I'm going to prove, you know, that he's mine and not hers. In a romantic tug of war, Sarah began to post her own pictures with Josh, and Rachel didn't like it one bit. Rachel wanted Josh all to herself. Is that correct? That's correct. It was the beginning of a vicious cyber smackdown between the lovesick teenagers. Sarah would say, Oh, you dropped out of school, you're a loser. You're a. F you know, Rachel would say some things back to her, like, you know, you're ugly or fat. And all the while, lover boy Josh continued to date both girls, fueling the feud. It seemed like he really sort of enjoyed all of this. He was saying, if you love me, fight for me. And that's what they were doing. That's exactly what they did. The trash talking and phone calls were becoming more explosive. You with me, you're with the wrong person. They would like post things like back to back. Josh would leave Sarah and go with Rachel. A status would be posted and that would cause so, so much drama. Finally, Sarah had had enough and began confronting Rachel face to face. Sarah and her friends would come in there and harass her nonstop, try to trip her. On Thursday nights, we had karaoke nights and there was a song called Girl Fight and her and a group of her friends came in and 
sang that song and pointed at her. Taunting her. Yeah, almost stalking her. Another time, Sarah chased Rachel down in her car and sprayed her with silly string. They tried to attack these girls. The police arrived and they asked the girls if they wanted to make a report. They said yes, and they basically talked them out of it and said, oh, it's just, you know, girls fighting. But it's not silly to these girls as it's going on. Because it's building and it's building and it's exactly. building. Exactly. Months of online taunting and teenage bickering finally comes to an explosive head. Sarah shows up at Rachel's apartment. A neighbor tells police she begins screaming threats. Saying, I'm gonna kick your ass, come downstairs, blah, 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 blah. And Rachel was home alone. Rachel, now terrified, grabs a steak knife, waits for Sarah to leave, and runs to her car. She took a steak knife with her because she didn't know who was down there. Where was she going? She was going to her ex-boyfriend Javier's house. Why was she going there? Because nobody would suspect that she would be there. Sarah leaves Rachel's apartment and drives over to play video games with Josh and his friends. Around midnight, Sarah's dad texts her about curfew. But before she can leave, one more text comes in. As she gets ready to leave, Rachel texts Josh and said, oh, I know you're with her. Sarah's infuriated, but mostly worried Rachel will swoop in on Josh as soon as he's alone. Sarah reluctantly leaves for home, but first heads to get a bite to eat with Josh's sister and another friend. On the way, they get a tip Rachel is nearby. Sarah's friend says, hey, I just saw Rachel. She's down the block with Javier. So Sarah, instead of going to McDonald's, turns around and goes to Javier's house. Sarah, now on the brink, goes looking for trouble and finds it. Sarah pulls up and Rachel comes running at her from the front of the house. They both met in the middle of the street. Sarah threw the first punch. Rachel ducked her head down and just kind of started frailing her arms. The girl fight lasts only moments. Looks like a fury of fist and hair pulling. But when it's over, one girl lay bleeding in the street. 911, what is your emergency? Um, there's a girl laying on the ground bleeding in the middle of the road. She said it, it hurts. And then that was it. Could you tell where she's bleeding from? It was right around her heart area. Two beautiful teenagers, 18-year-old Sarah Ludeman and 19-year-old Rachel Wade, both in love with this guy, Josh Camacho. He basically said, yeah, I was sleeping with her and her and her, and it, but it was they weren't my girlfriends. They were friends with benefits. The battle for the bad boy played out online and over their phones. But nobody thought the cyber cat fight would end up like this. What happened? <laughs> Rachel! She f***ed out her. Okay, where on the body is the patient? Oh, she got up in the chest. I think everybody just kind of thought again this was a, a high school teenage relationship where somebody was upset and really didn't see this as a powder keg that it actually turned into. Detective Michael Lynch says it was Sarah who came looking for a fight that night to duke it out and lay claim to Josh. What Sarah didn't know was Rachel brought a knife to the fist fight. Rachel has concealed a small, normal steak knife in her hand at the time that she began swinging at Sarah. Sarah stabbed once in the upper shoulder and then once directly over her heart. Now Sarah bleeding in the middle of the street and gasping for air makes one desperate call, not to her mom or dad, but to Josh. It wasn't even to 911. No, her, her last call, her, her cell phone they found was all sticky with her own blood and she'd reached back in there to, to call Josh. And she says something like, it hurts, it hurts. Jamie Severino, a friend to both the girls, was one of the first on the scene. Everybody was yelling uh, pretty much at Rachel. You know, like, like what you did, I can't believe you did this to her. Rachel was just, you know, sitting there with like a blank look on her face. I don't think she really knew what she did. At that point, Rachel is sitting uh, up on a bench smoking cigarettes and uh, pretty, pretty calm, just like you and I are now. Sarah is rushed to the hospital. Rachel is taken to the Pinellas Police Department for questioning. What kind of knife is it? Detective Lynch begins with that small steak knife. Why did you have it with you? Yeah, they said that they were going to find my car and follow me, and she got me to call okay. me. So you, are you telling me that you had it for some form of protection? Yeah, because I know they're going to jump me. This is the knife. 
Show me how you were holding it. And how did you I had it out to the side and she started swinging on me and then when I went to put my hands out she was swinging on me and I tried to defend myself. Uh, when you first hear the interview with her, you would have thought that this was just a, a teenage fight. I went out um, and met this girl on the street. We fought, and that was the end of it. When Sarah was hitting me, I went to hit her, and I really did not mean to stab her. I'm going to kill somebody. Rachel claims, and eyewitnesses' accounts confirmed, Sarah took the first swing, landing three punches to Rachel's head. Rachel claims she forgot she even had the knife in her hand. She says she just threw her hands up to defend herself. Why didn't you just run in the house and call the police? I don't know, but they came after me all the time. I did not. So you wanted it to end and be over with. Yeah, but I have no intentions whatsoever on stabbing her. Then the moment Rachel never saw coming. The next piece of information that you need to know is that she is dead. Oh my God. What started as a teenage cat fight turns to genuine heartbreak. And she died as a result of these stab wounds that she had. Rachel landed just two jabs with that steak knife. One pierced Sarah's heart. I didn't know what any of this happened. I just wanted them to finally leave me alone. She's not going to follow you anymore because she's dead now. <laughs> Police charge Rachel with second degree murder. Do you believe this was self defense? Yes, 100%. But how would a jury see it? Prosecutors paint Rachel as a vindictive girlfriend who took the knife with the intent to harm Sarah. Rachel took the fight out to Sarah in the middle of the road and then brought a deadly weapon with her. That's not stand your ground. But Rachel's attorney, Kelly McCabe, says she was standing her ground and had the right to protect herself. Do you believe Rachel could have ran away? or maybe chose to do something different. You don't have to run away, that's the law. The law is you get to stand your ground. A very believable argument. Then, prosecutors drop this. Seriously, I told you to watch the back and not to kill with him. Now you're mine and I'm guaranteeing you I'm gonna murder you, I'm gonna kill you. That phone call was made eight months before the fatal night. Still, it will seal Rachel's fate. We, the jury, find as follows, ask that the defendant in this case, the defendant is guilty of murder in the second degree as charged. So say we all. Rachel is sentenced to 27 years behind bars. The statement that was made by Rachel was that she was going to kill Sarah, and that was very difficult to overcome in the fact that she ultimately did kill Sarah. So what about the man in the middle and the part Josh Camacho played in this deadly love triangle? Should he be held accountable for something? I mean, for what, cheating on girls? One of the prosecutors at the trial said something like, you know, you can't charge someone with being a jerk. Loved ones on both sides of this case believe Josh played a major role. Unfortunately, police say there aren't any charges they can bring forward against him. I went to Josh's house to try to get his side of the story. Josh wasn't home, but his mother told us her son played no part in Sarah's death. Do you believe that Josh should have been held responsible or accountable for what he did? Rachel's new attorney is fighting to reopen the case, hoping to prove Rachel was acting in self-defense. But the lives of two teenage girls are now forever changed because they never stopped to consider the consequences. There was no winner in this. Uh, you know, one family lost their daughter to prison over a, a senseless act of fighting over a boy and the other family completely lost their daughter forever, you know, that they'll never see again.